kill. Kill Boko Haram. If you're a Muslim, you're a target. If you're a Christian, you're a target. They slaughter people like animals. Your wife, she captured by Boko Haram. We just got word that the MI-24 Hind is uh, going on operation for air support. I want to fight for my country. And if I die for my country, I know I die for my country. We're going to head down that IED-laden road for the final assault into Bama. Yes, sir. Let me leave this. I'm in Nigeria. It's one of the wealthiest countries in Africa, but since 2009, it's been facing an insurrection in the north uh, from a group called Boko Haram. I traveled to Nigeria to embed with the country's army as it ramped up its fight against Boko Haram. As the only journalist on the front lines, I arrived at a unit located less than a kilometer away from enemy forces. As we settled in for our first night in country, we quickly discovered how frequently this unit engages in combat. For me, the first indication that there's enemy activity is, um, or that there's a threat detected, is I hear one of these guns shooting a shell. So you do this every night, pretty much? Oh, every night, every night. So they just blast off 122 millimeter shell. They shot it, I think you said, almost nine kilometers downrange into enemy territory. The most important thing is that once we sight them, once we sight them, either they are very cool or they are motorcycle, we have to fire the general area. Very effective, yes? Very, very effective. Scared me. <laughs> Nigeria is almost equally divided along religious lines. The country's southern region is predominantly Christian and is home to oil and a thriving economy. The north of the country, on the other hand, has a majority Muslim population. With minimal natural resources, the north is extremely poor. Couple that with the lack of government presence, and it's become a breeding ground for the rise of radical Islam. In 2002, Muslim cleric Muhammad Yusuf founded the group Boko Haram. The name loosely translates to Western education is forbidden. So Muhammad Yusuf, the founder, grew up right over there. Yes. And then his mosque is yes. right here. Yeah, okay. And so this is literally where Boko Haram started. Yes. And you know, most of these young men ended up killing their parents. What? Their parents, their families, their, their friends. They have a list. They go one after another. In 2009, after Nigerian security forces killed Yusuf, his deputy, the more radical Abu Bakar Shakao, took over the group and violence increased exponentially. Danja, danja, danja. They bombed the UN headquarters in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, in 2011. But the group was still largely unknown outside of Nigeria. It wasn't until 2014, with the abduction of nearly 300 schoolgirls from Chibuk town in Borno state, that Boko Haram drew international attention and condemnation. My husband and I are outraged and heartbroken over the kidnapping of more than 200 Nigerian girls from their school dormitory in the middle of the night. The Bring Back Our Girls campaign was extremely successful at increasing awareness of Boko Haram. Unfortunately, it did almost nothing to prevent further attacks, and Boko Haram continued to terrorize northern Nigeria, causing thousands of refugees to flee their homes in rural areas and head to the city of Madaguri. I met one family who's living among a community of refugees. My name is Bukar Mohamed. This is Aliu Bukar. This is uh, Mohamed Bukar. And this is the smallest one? Uh, yeah, Alaji Modu. Modu. Mohamed. Mohamed. Bukar's entire family was abducted by Boko Haram. They managed to escape by fleeing into the bush. I had a gunshot. I said, what? I was thinking maybe soldiers, army of or armies now. So the gunshot was too too much. I say no, this thing not be an army. When you left for Niger, 
and they were in Damasak. They were captured by yeah, Boko Haram. Yeah, yeah, they were captured by Boko Haram. Right. And your wife, she uh, was um, detained along with many other women? Yeah, with all yeah, the other yeah. women many, in one many, house. Many, no, yes. And your son, they sent to oh, training yes, camp? Oh yes, training camp. When the boy jump over the fence. So he said he must go and see his mommy. Yes. So he escaped? Fortunately, just escaped. What has the effect of Boko Haram been on northern Nigeria? These people, they are just devil. You can't say they are doing it for religious purposes. No. Yes. They are just devil. They, can, they are doing it honestly. They can kill the Christians. They can kill the Muslims. They can just do it anyhow. You said that things are difficult for you now. You're having trouble sleeping, and you said you're not thinking. No, it's true. It's true, because I've been thinking of how they came and disturbed me from my... from where I'm living. I've been uh, drinking. It's only my brothers that can help me eating food, you know. It's not... No, it's not... Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Outside, I met Elijah, who was also a victim of Boko Haram. So the, uh, these people came up, uh, inside two vans around the side, and uh, beneath were bombed. So one of the bombs erupted and killed so many children like this. It, after the first bomb, some of my children, uh, my child and some of his colleagues, they all run to rescue the victims of that bomb blast. So as a result of them withdrawing or evacuating the dead bodies, the second bomb erupted and killed almost all of them. We lost up to 35 youths. Including your son? Including my son. And why did Boko Haram attack this area? They attacked because they, 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 they targeted populations. They are targeting populations, gatherings of people. Right. Wherever there is a crowd, that's their target. You said many of these children here, their families are victims? Most of them, they are, they are victims of Boko Haram because some of their families have been displaced from various villages. If you are a Muslim, you are a target. If you are a Christian, you are a target. They slaughter people like animals, which is not part of Islamic doctrine. I mean... yeah. During the day, there's a ton of street life in Mataguri. There's people in the market, school kids, all that stuff. You have to remember you're in an active conflict zone. So come dusk, like 6.30 or 7 o'clock at night, the streets empty out and everybody has to be in their homes because of this 7 p.m. curfew that's been instituted. On our way back from speaking with Elijah, we stopped at a local market to buy goods. It felt safe, but two days after our visit here, a Boko Haram suicide bombing killed 54 people. Because of the security situation in the entire region, President Goodluck Jonathan declared a national state of emergency. In an unprecedented and highly criticized move, he delayed the national elections scheduled for this past February. The president believed if he destroyed Boko Haram, his election victory was assured. This belief led to a massive escalation of force, combining troops from Niger, Cameroon, and Chad. And even that time-honored African conflict tradition, the use of private military contractors. Collectively, with the Nigerian army, they would try to end the war against Boko Haram. I believe when I train hard, I'll fight easy. And when you train hard, you bleed less. I slaughter Boko Haram with this. I used to slaughter them with this. <laughs> when I get them, I slaughter them. 